Hey everyone. Um, hope the weather is good in, in Singapore. Uh, unfortunately, none of the authors are able to come due to visa or uh, business reasons. Um, so we're presenting online. Um, I'm going to talk about individual welfare guarantees in the auto bidding world with machine learned advice. Uh, my name is Jason Liang. This is joint work with uh, Yuan Deng, uh, Negan Gorzai, Patrick Jaye, and also Vahab Marakni from MIT and Google. So the motivation of this work, uh, similar to many of the previous works, comes from online advertising markets, um, where ad platforms like Google, Meta, Adobe, et cetera, run auctions to sell ad impressions to buyers who are advertisers that basically wish to display their ads to users like you and me. So in this paper, we consider a practical ad auction model, uh, which I call the triple uh, multi-auction model, where a platform basically runs multiple multi-slot auctions and multiple buyers simultaneously bid in each auction. So to give this model more context, let me use Google sponsored search and example. And just as a disclaimer, we're not gonna talk about any proprietary uh, um, products and how Google runs uh, their business. Um, but basically this is a theoretical model, which says, uh, which basically involves allocating ad, ad slots to advertisers when a user submits a keyword search request. So let's say we search the word frying pan on the left-hand side over there, and we see on the top couple of slots, this sponsored label, which essentially means that the slots are allocated to these advertisers. And what happens in the back end is that the keyword query generates ad positions, which are then inventories that can be sold to advertisers through uh, multi-item auctions or multi-slot auctions. Now on the right-hand side, if we search another keyword called nonstick pan, uh, you may also realize that some ads may appear again. And this basically means that in practice, uh, advertisers typically uh, simultaneously bid in multiple uh, multi-slot auctions or multiple keywords. So the advertiser's objective um, that we consider here is to maximize their total value, uh, or you can think about it as the number of clicks, uh, while simultaneously respecting in, uh, you know, uh, return on investment ROI constraints such that the total acquired value across uh, all auctions is no less than the total spend, okay? So um, the conceptual model here, oops. Yep, sorry. So the conceptual model here um, is that we have multiple advertisers simultaneously submitting bids to multiple multi-slot auctions and taking the platform's perspective, uh, the main challenge is that we don't know these buyers' valuations as many of the talks mentioned before, and buyers may adopt arbitrary bidding strategies. Our goal in this part is to leverage uh, machine learning predictions or machine learning advice on the buyer values um, to improve individual buyer welfare. And I want to remark that there are a ton of works um, uh, outstanding that develop such uh, prediction models for these buyer values, as some of the talks uh, previously mentioned. Now, you might wonder why we're looking at individual welfare uh, in the first place instead of total welfare. Well, a previous work by uh, Santiago Bacero from Columbia University, as well as colleagues at Google, have shown that directly setting personalized reserve prices for buyers uh, using these ML predictions, memo of advice, uh, improves total buyer welfare for the entire platform. However, the pursuit of improving this total welfare may not necessarily guarantee that all buyers benefit equally or they're not necessarily all happy and may come at the expense of certain individual buyers' welfares. Um, and secondly, basically, uh, these results do not show, uh, do not shed light on how bidding behavior impacts individual welfare. So in this work, we aim to address these uh, deficiencies by first developing an individual welfare metric that depends on buyer behavior and further characterize bounds for this individual welfare metric under classic multi-slot auction formats like VCG, uh, generalized second price, GSP, and also generalized first price, GFP. And as a spoiler, the, the, the key takeaway is that by setting personalized reserve prices with ML advice on buyer values, we can achieve a best of both world results, which says that these ML advice, uh, using them as reserve prices, not only improves total platform welfare, but also individual buyer welfare. All right, so before I go into more details on these results, let me first formalize the notion of ML advice um, uh, and setting these ML advice as personal, uh, right, personalized reserves. So we consider ML advice in the form of a lower estimate of a buyer's value in a, a particular multi-slot auction. And this lower estimate is not unnatural because in many of the existing works or um, outstanding literature there, um, they provide basically predictions for click conversions uh, that have a confidence interval. 
um, to their predictions, which essentially we can take the left-hand side of the uh, individual uh, of these confidence interval to serve as our lower bound estimate. And we then say this uh, ML advice or ML prediction is beta accurate if the ML advice is at most beta times uh, the true value. And we uh, and when we set a personalized reserve prices for each buyer in each auction using these uh, respective ML prices, ML advices, um, we call these reserve prices approximate reserves. Okay. And this is just some definition. Now, uh, why are we directly using uh, ML advice as personalized reserves? And I'll try to give you a toy example to convince you that this is the right thing to do. So back to our frying pan and non-stick pan example. Um, let's say we're competing. There's only two players in the market, us and a competitor. Uh, we have a large value for the frying pan keyword. And then basically we don't care about the non-stick pan. Our competitor doesn't really care about the frying pan, although he or she has some small value, but cares a lot about the non-stick pan. So, in this particular case, if there are no uh, reserve prices, um, basically the uh, the competitor can outbid us um, in the frying pan auction, so the auction on the left, um, and basically exceeding their values as well. So they can overbid. Um, and the reason they can do that is that they can earn some large value just by bidding a super small amount in the non stick pan auction because they have no competition. So in this case, if we are able to set um, a personalized reserve for, let's say, the non-stick pan auction um, that is appropriately tuned, uh, such that it's not too big and not too small, um, we're essentially uh, enforcing the, the competitor being not able to manipulate the auction. So the cost for actually outbidding us um, in the frying pan auction um, is actually large. Okay, So this is the main motivation. Um, of setting personalized reserve prices using these ML predictions. And the ML prediction accuracy part comes in the fact that, you know, these personalized reserves has to be appropriately tuned. Okay, so takeaway, approximate reserves makes manipulative behavior very costly. And uh, from that perspective, we can actually improve individual welfare. So following this motivating example to set uh, approximate reserve prices with ML advice, uh, we formally show this intuition for classic multi-slot auctions. Uh, we first construct an individual welfare metric for any bidder, which is essentially the welfare of this bidder facing any competing bid profile. So this is like an adversarial worst case profile, um, such that uh, the, we want to measure the welfare of this bidder facing um, these kind of arbitrary profiles such that their ROI constraints are satisfied. Um, over this bidder's welfare under the efficient welfare maximizing outcome for the platform. So um, in the VCG auction example, um, assume we assume bidders are uh, bidding uniformly, uh, which uh, when that in the previous uh, talk already talked about, um, it basically means that the bidder decides on some scalars uh, called the multiplier and then submits a bid value in each auction equal to this multiplier times your actual value. And in this part, we show that in VCG auctions, the individual welfare metric has a lower bound that increases in ML advice accuracy beta, uh, the multiplier itself, and the market share, which is essentially means that as these factors increase, the bidder will not uh, will get better individual welfare guarantees. So this is a theoretical result um, for the VCG auction. And then we further show uh, that in the general case. Uh, sorry, in the general class of auctions that are truthful, allocation anonymous, and even possibly randomized, no auction format can universally dominate VCG in terms of this individual uh, welfare guarantee, because we can always find a problem instance in which there is a buyer whose metric exactly uh, equates the uh, welfare guarantee that we provided. And finally, we uh, extend our uh, results to uh, generalized second price and generalized first price uh, auctions, which are non-truthful auctions, and show a similar lower bound for our defined uh, individual welfare uh, metric, um, assuming a certain uh, undom uh, undominated bidding behavior, uh, which basically means that um, bidders always bid above their reserve prices. Um, and finally, we can uh, compare, uh, you know, these uh, parameters and figure out whether VCG is better than GSP slash GFP um, in different market scenarios. Okay, so I think I'm running out of time, but let me uh, end the technical stuff uh, with some uh, numerical studies using real data from a major search ad platform. We basically run VCG with approximate reserves uh, with different accuracies, 
as well as a control experiment with no reserves. And we assume all buyers adopt uniform bidding. And on the left graph here, uh, we can see that each point on these uh, S curves basically shows the proportion of buyers among the whole population who at most retains a certain proportion of the welfare uh, compared to the efficient outcome. So for example, if we look at the point uh, where the X axis is 0.8, the blue line up here corresponds to the no reserve control group, and the graph tells us that at 17% uh, of our buyers uh, can only retain at most 80% of the welfare uh, she would have obtained under the efficient outcome. Uh, or basically, equivalently, 17% of the buyers lost at least 20% of their welfare. So as we can see, as accuracy improves, accuracy of these ML predictions improves, um, you know, th this proportion decreases, meaning that less and less buyers would lose so much welfare. And this takeaway is that with higher accuracy, the population uh, individual welfare converge uh, to the efficient um, outcome welfare. Uh, and the, on the right-hand side, uh, it's a similar experiment, uh, but we basically um, kind of look at different uh, small, smaller buyers and larger buyers, and we conclude that approximate reserves have more influence on larger advertisers. Um, and I want to conclude my uh, presentation here. Thank you.